And welcome to the WGL APAC Season 1, Week 7. My name is Rogi. Joining me is El Vishka. Unfortunately, Alex chucked a bit of a sicky today, so yeah. I'll be filling in for yep. him just this once. Yeah, I've swapped positions with uh, Alex, essentially, I guess, and you've taken my <laughs> the position. The old switcheroo. So it's going to be a bit of a weird... Well, actually, he's out the back as well doing observing, so he's got your spot, you've got my spot, and I've got his spot. So really, it's all a bit crazy at the moment here, but uh, hopefully we're going to be able to get through today okay. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, a little bit of Mad Hatter syndrome where we all just change places, but we are here ready to cast some World of Tanks, and I'm pretty excited, actually. I've been, watch I've been watching it for seven weeks so far, but finally get to step up onto the desk and have a crack. Hopefully, hopefully you're not going to embarrass yourself here today. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you will, but uh, if you do, I'm going to be sure to call you out, so make sure you're on point. Look, it should be absolutely fine, but we do have yesterday's games up and ready for you guys. So we can take a look at the uh, onslaught that went on yesterday. And onslaught, indeed, the first game was quite a nail-biter with team efficiency taking on Horsemen, also taking out the game in a very uh, close 5-4 series. And Meltdown took on Dark Wolves in game number two. Meltdown, they've been impressing us time and time again. And another uh, great game against Dark Wolves netted them the win. Then in game number three, Karen Tigers, unfortunately, fell to the ever-dominant EL Gaming, who we'll be seeing coming up first in our series Today and B Gaming quite convincingly took out Team Coalition Zoo. Yeah, look, I mean, a couple of surprising results coming out there and a couple of unsurprising results coming out there as well. Uh, team efficiency, you know, I thought they wouldn't struggle quite that much against Horsemen. I thought they'd sure. be able to close it out a little bit better. Um, but obviously they came in yesterday, you know, had some different players on their roster and things maybe just weren't quite gelling. In the end, they got it done, um, but weren't able to pick up as many points, obviously, as B Gaming did yesterday. And obviously then you saw B Gaming jump up in the standings a little bit above them. So that was a bit of an interesting dynamic. And hopefully, I guess, for efficiency here, they're going to pull off a good result today and, uh, I guess, take their position back. Mm. Speaking of positions, we're going to have a look at the standings, see where everyone kind of tallies up right now. No surprise, you see EL Gaming sitting at that number one spot. Meltdown in second, B Gaming in third, Team Efficiency, Karen Tigers and Horseman rounding out the middle of the pack, then sitting all the way at the bottom. Unfortunately for them, it's Team Coalition Zoo and the Dark Wolves. Yeah, definitely a lot of work to do for, for both of those teams today. And actually, they're playing each other, so some uh, I guess a good opportunity for both those teams to get some points on the board, considering, sure. I guess, respectively, they're each other's weakest opponent. Mm. Uh, so, an important game for both Coalition Zoo and Dark Horse, but across the board, all the games that we're going to be seeing coming out today definitely are something to play for for these teams. Uh, you know, we're getting in towards the, the later stages of the series here, and, you know, all these teams are at the moment coveting that top four spot, and at the moment, uh, Meltdown, B Gaming, and Efficiency, of course, are uh, sitting in there pretty well, and I think it, it goes without saying that EL, of course, are going to be sitting up the top, but uh, definitely there's a lot to play for here today and in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly right. We can see these guys kind of edging away, leading the pack here, mm -hmm. so hopefully the guys down in the bottom don't give up too much hope just yet and can crawl their way back in because well the tanks we've seen it time and time again can go either way when these guys get into the field and really take the game to them uh, kind of flex their play styles a little bit here yeah definitely I mean a lot of these teams started off well and have had a bit of a I guess a lackluster performance towards mm. the later stages of the tournament, but some teams have similarly started off poorly and have really been on the rise. So definitely a lot, again, to uh, to see how things are going to go here in the last couple of weeks. I think it still really isn't decided who we're going to be seeing at finals. We're going to have a look at today's games for you guys. Of course, yesterday we saw both Horsemen and EL have very good games. Unfortunately, Horsemen losing that one away 4-5, but they did show up and they did show up to play. So EL Gaming, they may have more of a challenge than they're expecting here today. But after that, we have a team Coalition Zoo taking on Dark Wolves B Gaming versus Team Efficiency and Karen, Tag Karen Tiger sorry, taking on Meltdown in our last game of the day. Yeah, I mean, you say you say EL Gaming might have a bit of a challenge here. I don't know about that. I'm being be optimistic here. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's be Well, to be honest, I, you know, I'm generally the one that's, I guess, a little bit more of a realist in these yep. situations. Uh, when it comes down to me and Alex, I suppose you're fulfilling his part of the bargain <laughs> in that one. Um, yeah, look, I don't necessarily think that Horseman's going to really have a good time here sure. against EL Gaming. I think it's pretty fair to say. EL Gaming, they looked fantastic yesterday. They had absolutely no troubles at all against Karen Tiger, who, True. to be honest to me, feel like a stronger team than Horseman at the moment as well. So uh, overall, you know, all things considered, I'd have to say really one of the best case scenarios for, for Horseman is maybe they can get one half on mines or one half on steps. Maybe 5-2, best case scenario, but uh, I think I'm going to go with 5-1 for that first matchup of today. The last time they did verse, they were able to take away two rounds off EL, so hopefully yeah. they have uh, grown in that well, time yeah. and can put a little bit of improvement, even if it's baby steps, just get maybe a 5-3, they'll be happy with that? Maybe. Well, I mean, I would argue actually that Horsemen started off the season quite well compared sure. to where they're at now. Like To me, it felt like Horsemen 
you know, a few weeks ago were a lot stronger than where they are at the moment. So coming into the, today's match, I, I'm not so sure if they're actually going to be able to do that. Yeah, if they can do that, it'll be fantastic for them again. But even in saying that, if they can pick up three, it's still not going to net them any points on the board, which they desperately need being down towards the bottom of the standings at the moment. Well, look, that's a great point. And we talk about teams growing. Of course, EL Gaming, they're growing as well. They've been looking strong from start to finish. You can see some of their standout players yesterday, Guan Ren and Black, really are shone to me. Yeah, I mean, of course. Across the board, really, there's a lot of big names on this lineup. So, yes, we can we can pick out a couple that looked good yesterday, but really, again, on the day today, who knows who could show up, really? I think they all can show up. They all have that potential. So, you know, for me, EO Gaming, just man for man, such a strong lineup. It's really hard to... We talk about the good players, but it's even more difficult to spot out the bad players because this team seemed to cover all bases. No chink left in the armor, no stone left unturned. Every time they get into the map, it seems that they're all covering each other's flanks, each other's blind spots, and working well as a cohesive unit. Yeah, definitely. Their, their team play, I guess, is exceptional, yeah. especially considered... Co co compared to the majority of the the teams here in APAC. I mean, you know, that goes to show exactly why they're one of the best teams or the best definitely. team in the region. I don't even have to say one of because no. they're quite convincingly at the top of the scoreboard there at the moment. But uh, definitely they've just proved time and time again that their team play is much better. They're fighting, like they're, they're group fighting together. They're sort of their wolf pack type uh, battles. And of course, uh, those brawly situations, their focus fire, it's just it's everything. Oh, we're gonna so much better for you. We're going to have to see if the Horse Pack can take on the Wolf Packers Horsemen on the other side of the table. They have quite a fight in them today. But uh, Faluso and Colin, they've been playing very well. Gorilla as well. When he gets on those kind of medium level tanks getting around on the flanks, he can do some damage. Yeah, definitely. Look, there's some uh, some big names on this lineup as well. Like uh, for me, Faluso, I think, is the one to watch out for. Oh, for Horseman. He feels very consistent to me. I said this all yesterday, of course, as well. But... Uh, be looking to him to really have a good performance here if horsemen are going to really take it to EL Gaming. Uh, and again, I think we're going to have to see a lot of those other players step up. Probably everyone on the lineup for horsemen in reality is going to have to step up to another level here to take it to EL Gaming because individually, man for man, EL Gaming to me are the stronger lineup. Horsemen can definitely challenge them uh, on their day. But yesterday, again, we saw Horsemen, you know, not looking so great. Yeah. Uh, they've been changing up their, their style a little bit lately as well. They're not going so aggressively anymore. And to be honest, when you, you look at the, the sort of matchup here between EL Gaming and Horsemen, maybe that will, will play a little bit into the favor of Horsemen because they can set up some traps, play a little bit slower, and, and expect that EL Gaming will push them, which is a highly likely situation given the way that EL Gaming tends to play. But I think if, if Horsemen come out here and play you know, EL's game sure. and both play, well, EL plays aggressively and Horseman plays aggressively as well. I think that is going to play into EL Gaming's hands and, you know, you can't necessarily beat EL Gaming at their own game. Well, it's such a bad trap for teams to fall in, especially less experienced teams when going up against like juggernauts, like these powerhouses of EL Gaming. They come into a game and think, if we just play standard, we can't beat them. We have to match their aggression. And that's exactly what EL seem to want. They love those uh, fast and heavy fights where it's absolute chaos and they can pick off the weak members who are trying to retreat with a half damage tank, maybe yep. not get off that last few shots where the EL player will sacrifice their body till the very end. It's very rare to see in sort of those all-out early aggressive brawls that EL will actually lose those. Yeah. Yeah. At the very worst, they're going to go even. And in that case, even... Even though they're getting, you know, even tanks lost and 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 taken down, it always it always for some reason seems to be the case that EO Gaming is able to do just a little bit more damage yeah. to those remaining tanks or something like that. They always come out of it with an advantage. So for me, Horsemen, they they definitely can't afford to get into those early brawls. And even if they do, you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried for them. It always come, seems to come down to EL's focus fire. They just seem to know exactly who's going to turn tail and run, and that's a player that yep. they pick off. And once the kind of front line of those big tanks falls, the rest are just left vulnerable. And they use the terrain so damn well. Every single little bit of cover that EL can take, they will abuse yep. and just kind of poke in and out, getting the shots when they can, and then just going back under a hill or a rock, uh, mind you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, EL Gaming as well, they're so good at, at identifying which targets oh, yeah. they need to, to focus down. You can always see together as a unit, they're always firing on the same person or, or the majority of them are going to be firing on that person. And, and they take down the, the main damage, you know, maybe a TVP, a bat chat straight away before the fight's really even started. And that's just a massive chunk of the damage out of the hands of their opponent, in this case, Horsemen. So like I've said, I mean, I really hope here Horsemen ha have got something up their sleeves. But for me, you know, like I said, best case scenario, probably 5-2. And when I look across at the map pool here, I think they potentially could get 
two rounds. Sure. Uh, Mines and Steps have come out into the pool here, and those are, I guess, the, the weaknesses that we've sort of identified here for EL Gaming. But, I mean, in saying that, they're not really weaknesses. They're just weaker than the maps that EL Gaming tend to play. So, you know, across the board, I still don't think Horsemen have much of a chance in this one. Well, we've got to kind of go with why they're here. They're still here. They're still in this top eight. They've proven themselves that they are a worthy competitor. Sure, maybe not against EL, but yeah. these guys are still a great lot of tankers, so we're going to have to try and focus on what they can do. We know what EL are going to do. They're going to come in, they're going to cause chaos and havoc and just ramp up. How can Horsemen deal with such aggression and still hope to come out on top? Well, look, like I said, I think they have to play this newer style that they have yeah. started to, I guess, uh, practice and, and, and try and make use of that. They can be, expect to see Horsemen play aggressively into their hands and if they can set up some good crossfires, set up sure. some traps for EO Gaming, maybe that will play into their hands. Um, you know, mines and steps are going to be the keys here for, for Horsemen, I feel. We've actually got Ruinberg, Mine, Steps, Prokhorovka. That's the, the first four maps. And so... I would expect probably EL Gaming is not going to have all that much trouble here on Ruhmberg, but Mines, that's really where, where Horsemen here are going to have to, to come back into the the series because if they go down 3-0 or 4-0 after Mines, then it's going to be all over. But definitely if they can you know pick up the first half of Mines, maybe take that momentum through to the second half and really put EL Gaming under a little bit of pressure, then perhaps there's something for them. And we know that Horsemen are actually pretty good on Mines. Like, yeah, they're yeah. not bad at attack. They're, they're very... Uh, comfortable on that one and similar on steps they're very comfortable on the attacking side of steps so there's possibilities here for horsemen but it just it, it's kind of like a balance at the moment are we going to see EL really just run away with it or are we going to see maybe a bit of a closer match here today it depends I think on how EL come into this one really well that's the thing right EL they had a amazing performance yesterday against Karen Tigers just completely swept the floor with them didn't yeah. even make it look close maybe a few rounds came down to the uh, last few tanks but in the end EL did take that one out 5-0 and Karen Tigers obviously higher up on the leaderboard than Horsemen so Horsemen they are got their backs up against the wall so mm -hmm. it's going to be a very uphill battle for them but like you mentioned there are a few maps if they can kind of we're expecting them to lose the Ruinberg here so if they can kind of get their minds from that and focus on what where their strengths lie and how they can best abuse them to gain some of that momentum, to gain some of that confidence, then maybe we could see them kind of rally and uh, give us a competitive series. Yeah, I mean, the, the matchup on Mines in particular is going to be interesting to watch because to me it feels like Horsemen are one of those teams that always do tends to, ru to rush the, the hill on the mine. Oh, yeah. Uh, so in that case, like I've said before, I don't know if that's going to necessarily work out for them. And yes, you know, they're, they're very good on Mines attack and they've looked good so, you know, that might have been against perhaps some of the weaker teams here where their aggression has been able to to roll over their opponents. In this case, though, if they go for that same strategy here on Mines, things are going to be a little difficult. So, yeah, it remains to be seen. But, of course, Ruhlberg, the first map, they're going to have to get through that one. We'll have to see what exactly they are going to be rolling out with here on Ruhlberg. So, a lot of interesting tanks, I'm sure. Well, you say that, but things are looking no. pretty standard across the board, <laughs> to be honest. Shots and AMX. Yeah, yeah, AMX 50Bs are coming out for Horsemen. I do like that, although the issue that we saw yesterday for Karen Tiger, when they picked a very auto-loader heavy lineup here against EO Gaming, was that EO was able to recognize when those auto-loaders were on the reload here, and well, potential for a similar situation here for the Horsemen. Sure. EO Gaming starting off on the defensive side. Um, you know, I like their lineup here. They've got a mix of heavies, they've got a mix of mediums, and of course the RU251 there as well, which they need to get. Uh, so they have that tier 8 tank in there. You look, I mean, across the board, both these lineups aren't too bad. Horseman, I think, will, will try and force an early brawl. Uh, and try and pick off one or two of those EO Gaming tanks with those autoloaders and then take that advantage, fall back out, you know, try and get the reloads across and then maybe take it again to the remaining EL tanks. But, you know, whether or not that's going to happen, I guess remains to be seen here. Well, I like what you mentioned about how EL, they know all these small intricacies, especially when they went up against Karen Tiger who ran a similar lineup and they yeah. were able to just time themselves around those autoloaders and just completely outplay their opponent. But we are getting into our first match of the day, EL taking on Horsemen. Yeah, Horseman heading in towards the two cap at the moment. So starting off on the attack here, and it looks like Black should be able to spot out the majority of those players. I mean, Horseman getting some spots off as well, but definitely uh, I don't mind the start here that EL Gaming have managed to get. And they've got a decent setup as well. They've got a few players in towards that town there. And look at this, already a lot of damage going over to those Horseman players. And this is what EL Gaming is so good at, just getting free damage across. Yeah, they're just getting peppered right now. They're really finding it difficult to even get into some of that city cover. And like you said, EL Gaming, every single time they seem to know where their opponents are going to go and just yep. set up this firing line, essentially. The firing squad there, of course, working out pretty well for EL Gaming. Quiet, he took a little bit of damage, but obviously he's still okay, sitting on just over a 1,000. Yeah, he's in a bat chat, so he doesn't necessarily need True. all that HP to play with. He can just play sort of the, the peak style where he can pop out, fire a couple of shots off, hide again, 
doesn't necessarily need to be trading his HP with an opponent. So for now, uh, it's been a good start here for EO Gaming. They've forced Horseman back off that 2-cap, back into the town, and now Horseman are going to have to really, I suppose, either rotate back up to that 1-cap or, or try and force themselves back onto this 2-cap, which uh, admittedly probably isn't the best of decisions at this point. Well, that's the thing. We know that Horsemen, they love to go that early aggressive stage, get into that 2-cap, like we said, and try and brute force their way in, make their opponents kind of scramble and answer to their call. But guess what? EO Gaming were one step ahead as usual, ready and waiting. Got a lot of damage down onto Archon. He's feeling a bit hurt right now, but you mentioned those bash outs, they are able to dish out a lot of damage. Health bar, not too important. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, across the board, both these teams are still relatively healthy here, so I don't think it's going to be too bad for either of them. But Horsemen, you know, they just hurt a little bit more. Overall, you know, EO Gaming, they're so good at just getting those slight advantages. And even in these sort of slow games, which we, we tend not to always see coming out from EO Gaming, but when we do see a slow playstyle coming out from EO Gaming, it's, it's kind of like they just slowly but steadily get every sort of very minor advantage and eventually these start to build up sort of the snowball becomes to in effect i suppose mm. and eo gaming are really just able to roll away with the, the game after five minutes or so when their opponents are half dead well that's the thing you're looking at the positions that our el gaming have taken up and kind of rooted themselves in around the city using a lot of great cover a lot of line of sights to ensure that anytime a horseman player tries to maybe dart in between a few of these lanes they are going to get spotted and you can see only Quiet is really the outlier here. He's so far from the rest of the team, but the others, they're all situated in these positions that can be answered quite quickly yep. should uh, the Horseman players ever get a little bit too greedy. A nice little drift from Archon there. <laughs> yeah, but even if Quiet gets spotted out here by the Horseman, and I think actually the Horseman do have a, some degree of awareness that Quiet is actually there. The issue, though, is if they try to take advantage of that position that he's in and, and take him down, there's there's plenty of players from EO Gaming that have a very quick rotate over to a position where they're going to be able to fire upon horseman players that are trying to take out their teammate there on quiet. So even though he's, I guess, isolated a little bit from his team, he's only in a se he's only isolated in the sense that he's not close to them. The EO Gaming members can still provide backup for him, and, and that's what's most important. Small squadron of horseman tanks are moving up, being led by Spencer here, trying to get in onto that uh, one-cap city side. Guan Ren will have to be first point of defense there. See a few shots, Hawks taken 300 from Fox, who's got that accuracy, a lot of shots coming in, Hawks, he's got to be careful now, Gorilla in the firing line, and this is just what EL excel at. Yeah, exactly, I mean, this is not so great at all for Horsemen, they've been taking a lot of damage on that cross, and, and now, I mean, Sun Mi's taking a little bit in response, but he's still okay for the moment, taking a few more shots above, or well, just below HP, half HP now. And, and, well, this cap has been started here by Horseman, so we are going to have to start to see a bit of a rotate from some of these EL Gaming players. And now you can see Black's taking a little bit of damage as well. So Horseman really starting to put some pressure across onto EL Gaming, but similarly, they're losing so much HP themselves. Mm, they're forcing Quiet to rotate down as well, but Flag will be the first responder. Spencer, he's quite low, does have a high mobility, low armor tank. So we'll have to see if he can get a few shots off before his inevitable death. Though here comes Flag, he's spotted. Does he know that Spencer is there? Spencer might be able to get a little cheeky here. Doesn't no. actually get it. He manages to Whoa. bounce it off the side of Flag oh. there. And Flag, so good, is able to pick up Spencer there. And, uh, you know, across the board, not a single player yet from EO Gaming has gone down. Sun Mi is very low, but... He's running on empty right now. He, he's been soaking up so much damage and so many shells here that Horseman could have been putting to better use on some other tanks, some lighter tanks, unlike that 113, which, of course, is going to be bouncing a couple of shells every now and then. And, well, you can see, look at this. All of a sudden, Horseman have got three tanks left yeah. and no HP to play with. So, overall, I think that's a pretty convincing start from EO. Yeah, things just went from bad to worse for Horsemen. They got beaten to the punch straight up, just getting destroyed out of the gate, trying to go for that two cap. Went back into the city, hit it around a little bit, tried to go for that one yep. uh, cap push, and it was kind of disaster from there. Sun May got into a very advantageous position, was able to spot out any reinforcements, get about 600 damage per shot out there, mm. was able to survive against all odds as well. Yeah, look, I mean, overall, like... There was nothing really that Horsemen could do there. They Everywhere they pushed, there was a few EL Gaming members trying to put some damage into them, and they were able to do that. And like I said, it was sort of that slow and steady style from EL Gaming that we don't often tend to see, but when we do, they're always able to just get those small little bits of damage across, and eventually, all of a sudden, you saw exactly what happened there. Horsemen end up with what? Like one two, three tanks left alive with maybe like a thousand HP between yeah, them. Yeah. So again, what are you going to do in that situation? The answer is pretty much nothing. 
hopefully they can come up with something because if they are coming into the next same thing and oh we got nothing left we tried to come out of the gate strong didn't work out they are on defense this time around so we'll have to see how they do well against our EL's uh, kind of coin digression here yeah exactly I mean obviously uh, yesterday we saw Horseman have a bit better of a time on the defense so hopefully I guess today they might be able to pull something off against EL Gaming but I mean off the back of that performance there EL Gaming as we watch the replays here you can just see how much of an advantage they were in early on and how much they were just able to, to really take advantage of that. Yeah, they just never felt threatened. Every single yeah. time that Horseman made a move, it seemed like they were playing into the hand of EL, and that's just the story of the APAC region yep. so far as EL, they set the playing field, and then your forces go, oh, well, this is what this these are the resources we have. This is what EL has given us. How best can we use it? Yeah, exactly. And, and in the second half here for Horseman, you know, I'm I'm a little worried for them, to be honest. Like I said on Ruinberg, I think this should be a 2-0. Yeah, well, let's have a look at the recap of that game and see where the real damage dealers lied. The oh, TVPs. Surprisingly enough, all four of the top are on the side of EO Gaming. Actually, there. five out of the top seven for EO Gaming oh, there. there as well. So, uh, you know, only the AMX 50Bs for Horseman putting up some reasonable damage numbers. But again, you know, to see 1,600 and 1,700 coming out from, a from your AMX 50Bs, considering they're... Generally speaking, one of your top damage tanks, which we might see somewhere around two and a half to three thousand damage, mm -hmm. it's just not enough there for Horsemen. And obviously, they were they had their backs against the wall, so it was always going to be difficult to do that damage. But you know, we needed, of course, a few of these tanks to step up. And really disappointing as well there for Har Archon and Hawks, uh, both in bat chats. Those numbers are not good enough. Spencer in a batch at 25 TAP and Gorilla as well. They actually out damage their their tier 10 counterparts, but even still, like the damage that we're seeing coming out of those tier 9 bat chats again is not enough here for the horsemen. So they were just struggling to get damage across and just Rex as well. I don't know how you only managed to get one shot off there. He must have got popped straight away there by EO Gaming. And again, like what we, what we talked about, where EO Gaming are just so good at focusing down those uh, those high threat tanks. And of course, an AMX 50B is just that. It seemed to be exactly that. Uh, I think Just Rexy tried to come up through that middle lane when they were going for that right. two push. And instantly, we mentioned the focus fire mm -hmm. that EL had in their arsenal completely just deleted him from the game. Yeah, look, I mean, he, I guess he had no chance. If he yeah. only got one shot off, didn't manage to connect <laughs> it, which is unfortunate for him. But really, at the end of the day, what would it have made a difference? I think True. that extra 400 damage wouldn't have been uh, hurting EL. They may have killed it. one tank. Maybe, maybe. But like <laughs> I said, like... It's just, it's just EO Gaming being EO Gaming, really. We'll have to see if Horseman can adapt and kind of maybe bring something new to game number two. They will be on the defense, so they do have the time uh, as something they can play with here. They did yeah. feel their backs up against the wall in game number one. They were against the clock. They were kind of forced into a bad position after their initial strategy didn't go through for them. So yep. now on the defense, they have a little bit more time to kind of rethink how they want to play out the defense. Yeah, definitely. And they're actually a little bit more comfortable on Rurenberg defense as well. I mean, sure. according to the statistics where they have a bit of a better win-loss ratio. So hopefully here, I guess, for Horsemen, they're going to be able to bring this one back to a 1-1. Remains to be seen, though. I'll we'll have to see what tanks they are bringing into game number two here. Let's have a look and see. Again, a fairly similar lineup coming out from Horseman where they've got mostly auto loaders, but this time a couple of 113s. Sure. Uh, so I don't mind that. A double IS-7 coming out from uh, EL Gaming is a little bit different. Uh, and a Grill 15, we've seen them pick that up a fair bit on Ruinberg as well. So don't mind that. I think this is probably going to be a two-flag push. Get those IS-7s or one of the IS-7s in towards sort of that hull-down pillbox type situation. The other one maybe onto the cap and get that Grill potentially firing down that middle alleyway or even what looks like they're going to do here is actually just send him in towards that two-flag. So uh, again, not a bad setup here for EL Gaming. We'll see how these IS-7s go, but I'm, I'm quietly confident about them. Look, EL don't mess around. If they're going for a two cap, you better believe they're sending all seven members strong. There's no reason to have someone lurking around at that number one size. We can see that Spencer moving up quite far into the city to try and get some early scouting down, but it's going to be quite apparent that this EL Gaming going fast and hard for that two cap. Yeah, look, there's so many EL Gaming members have been spotted out so far. Black and Sunmi, both the IS-7s, both the Bat Chats there as well for EL Gaming have all been spotted out, and I mean, unsurprisingly, you see Black getting into that sort of a pillbox here. He's going to be so hard to take down. Actually, Sunmi joining him in a similar position here, so it doesn't look like EL Gaming particularly interested in really committing onto the cap just yet. They're going to try and take advantage of that strong turret armor that the IS-7s have and, and make life really difficult for Horsemen just by winning those trades ever so slowly like what we saw in the last matchup. Good to see. No one being taken any damage just yet so a lot of shots being fired but none really connecting. You can see on the minimap here Spencer he snuck his way all the way into the enemy spawn point maybe going for some of those cheeky shots 
try and get some initial damage off the bat, but EO Gaming, the push might be coming in sooner than they think. Yeah, so now we can see one of those EO Gaming IS-7s making his way onto the two flag, and it's going to be incredibly tough here for Horseman to even try and reset that without taking a huge amount of damage. Fox TS in that Grill 15, he'll be popping so many shells into his oppo opponents, and you can see those two bat chats as well from EO Gaming are set up in prime positions just to be firing straight down onto anyone that's trying to get resets, and it's not the easiest thing to get a reset onto an IS-7 in this sort of a position, so it's a difficult situation now for Horseman. Black in that pillbox as expected. Uh, you know, he's going to make life difficult for the Horseman as well just by firing shots into them from the side and really no one's going to be able to trade with him. So I think it, at the moment I suppose it really just comes down to Spencer. Maybe if he can catch Flag off guard here, do a bit of damage across to him, potentially there's something available here for the Horseman. So we'll have to see how it turns out. Once again you can see EL taking a lot of damage. Sun Me actually, he's going to be taking quite low being forced out of that two cap and Spencer trying to get some shots onto Flag, a few going wow. wide here, but EL maybe have to be on the retreat. Yeah, those two AMX 50Bs just peeked out from the uh, from the alleyway there and <laughs> absolutely ab obliterated Sun Me almost. He's down to 560 HP, so definitely a little bit worse for wear. They've retreated now, they'll be on the reload here, but uh, that was a good trade actually for for the Horsemen. They do have a HP advantage here, and, and one of those core tanks for EO Gaming, that IS-7 of Sun Me, is already very low. So not a huge HP pool to play with now for EO Gaming, and they're, they're ever so slowly losing more and more HP. Looks like they're going to try and take the fight now to Horsemen, though. They know the reload timings quite well, as you can see, while those two uh, massive tanks are going to be reloading, they're moving their way up. Guanren does take a shot in the back. Gorilla Hawks and Just Rex playing quite well, using the cover to their advantage, trying to force this EL Gaming sword into a disadvantageous position. Yeah, they're trying to get the EL Gaming players to peek in towards them so that those AMX 50Bs down in the alleyway are going to be able to get lots Ooh. of free shots across. But nice, he might have overextended a little bit Definitely. there. Takes a huge amount of damage. Although there is the kill coming out. Flag picks up Hawk, so that's the first kill of this round, and it goes the way of EL Gaming. Look at that EL Gaming. They're able to just turn things around at the drop of a hat. Gorilla does answer with one on tonight, but EL have already picked up two tanks. Horsemen, they do have the HP pool advantage, but more cannons equals more damage. We'll have to see how EL can play with that. Yeah, definitely need to see these AMX 50Bs from Horsemen get a little bit more involved in this battle. They need to rejoin their team, but at the moment they're kind of being held off by that IS-7 of Black, and really, you know, EL just playing the numbers game up in that little, little township up there. They had a, a massive advantage in terms of tanks there, and as a result, they pick up a two-for-one trade. Yes, they're still a little bit lower on HP, but they are very much in the advantage or in the driver's seat of this battle again. Look, and their aggression just once again rewarded. Every single time you think that the enemy team, of the opposition to EL, have the one-up, have maybe the... Uh positional advantage, things just go awry and EL come in, they know how to just completely pull the rug from under their feet. Yeah, exactly. And Fox TS in the Grill 15 here, he's been quite crucial in this victory, or potential victory really, for EL Gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already seen him put quite a few shots across as well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him up towards the top of the scoreboards. And, and again, it's just another tank really that Horsemen aren't necessarily going to be too comfortable playing around because we don't see the Grill 15 all that often. We don't see it all that often on Ruhlberg in particular as well, especially on the attacking side. So, again, just a bit of a change up there from EL Gaming, which might have thrown a bit of a spanner in the works here for Horsemen. Overall, it's been a pretty good performance so far from EO Gaming, but we just have to wait and see whether or not they're going to be able to close it out here. Nondesu and Faluso are going to have to really come out strong and get some of that damage down. They are going to be forcing the cap once again. Black takes a shot to the backside. 297 damage from Gorilla. Yeah, I don't actually mind the position now that Horsemen are in. There's not really anyone covering off those AMX 50Bs. Mm. So if they peek out at the right time here, they could potentially take Black down, pick up a, you know, an easy kill, essentially. Much but needed kill. Looks like they are going to opt to go for that. Heal Gaming not managing to land any of those shots. So they are, those two AMX 50Bs still being covered off here. Really, I think it just comes down to these AMX 50Bs. If they can do work, then Horsemen are still within a chance. It's going to be difficult, though, because every time they peek out, it seems that EL have their number. Yeah. A massive shot onto Nondesu. He gets taken considerably low, only about a third of his health left. That was a big 700 damage. Yeah, that was coming out from Fox TS and the Grill 15 once again. Both of those AMX 50Bs now are one shot for the Grill 15, so, you know, they have Ooh. a lot more of a difficult time trying to peek in here. And 
We're going to see Black going down, but Fox Tears in the Grill 15 does manage to trade out one of those AMX 50Bs. A probably a worthwhile trade there for EO Gaming, considering they had that tank advantage. And across the board now, Horsemen are just dropping like flies. Look, you have to commend EO Gaming. They get the massive shot onto Falus uh, Nandas, who force him back, and then, like that, snap their fingers. They're all in aggression on the remaining members of Horsemen. They're just going to be taking out Gorilla now, Nandasu left to uh, kind of lick his wounds here. Quiet takes him out, making it look easy once again. Yep, look, a, a fairly similar situation to what we saw on the first half, uh, where, you know, EO Gaming was just getting lots yeah. of free damage across, lots of free shots, and just able to slowly but surely snowball the game from there. It was very difficult for these teams to kind of work around the EL Gaming aggression. At the end, it was kind of a stalemate here. They got that one massive shot onto Nundus, who forced him back, and then yeah. the remaining five or six from EL just completely just rush straight through the town, take out the lighter tanks that Horsemen had kind of had littered around the landscape there, and it's all gravy after that. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, to be honest, there was two kind of key sort of parts of that battle for each, well, one for each team, right? Mm -hmm. So the Grill 15 for EO Gaming, we saw how much work that did. Oh, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Fox TS actually up towards the top of the, the damage charts when we have a look at them. And those two AMX 50Bs for Horsemen, they needed to really put a bit more work in. We saw them get some good shots off to begin with, and that's why Horseman was able to sort of stick in that battle for such a long time. But obviously towards the end of the battle, they were getting covered off yeah. by Fox TS in that Grill 15. They really couldn't move out of that position that they were in, and uh, obviously it didn't work out too well for them. Look, that's the thing, right? They had to be able to get those tanks into the position to do work, but once again, it seems like a sniper's nest when the grill is in the hands yep. of Fox. He was able to just completely zone off the members, and you can see as we're going through the replays, the early uh, skirmishing for Horsemen was quite favourable, but the focus fire from ER once again paying dividends. Yeah, look, Nice needed to really go down here for, for Horsemen. They didn't manage to get him. Guan Ren is also... Look, look at how many low players there yeah. are on EL Gaming. Sun Mi, Guan Ren, or Nice had to die a lot earlier than what they did. And unfortunately for Horsemen, or, you know, maybe you could put it down to EO Gaming being so good at trading that aggro and, and you know, making making sure that the Horsemen can only fire at the, the tanks that have a lot of HP to play with. And, and I guess, in that sense, utilizing their HP as a resource. But um, unfortunately, you know, for Horsemen there, they weren't able to take down those low HP tanks, and a low HP tank can still fire. Look, that's right. A 1 HP tank can still do damage, and I feel like that's where EL's success really lie in. They all are able to utilize just those extra damage cannons that they have, depending on how low the tank is. If he's still alive and kicking, he's still doing deeps. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, speaking of deeps, let's have a look and see if Fox TS was up the top there. And there you go. There he goes. 3,500 in that Grill 15. I mean, sometimes we see the Grill 15 picked, and it basically does nothing, but... Typically, it's not a Grill 15 picked in the hands of EO Gaming that does nothing. Fox TS using that one very well. And, uh, well, Nundus in the AMX 50B there for uh, for Horseman. He did a bit of work. Archon in the bat chat as well. But, like, again, you know, just across the board, once again, you can see EO Gaming get the better, getting the better of it. Yeah, once again, they're just really coming out strong, fast and heavy, making it look easy for all you tankers at home. Hopefully, maybe thinking, hey, I want to pick up the Grill A2. He did a great job, 3.5k, but you mentioned we do see it quite often, and quite often it is uh, down to this uh, 12, 13, 14 mark. Yeah, in, uh, in like he might damage. get one shot off or something like that and, and get taken out, but uh, not the case in that particular no. situation, of course. And yeah, look, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy with the performance there from me or Gaming. They didn't look like they were going to lose that one. I mean, maybe on the second half, it, things could have gone dicey. either way for a moment. But, you know, at a certain point in that one, they were just able to, you know, flick a switch. And yeah. then again, it was just back to, to what we would have expected from EO Gaming. Well, that's the thing. We kind of expected Runeberg to go that way. But coming into the next map, of course, Mines, it may be a little bit more favoured for Horsemen. Let's see if they can try and maybe sneak out a win here. Yeah, to me, I think Mines is a bit of a 50-50, a, a toss-up at the moment. Sure. It definitely has been. That's a bold statement when you talk about EL. 50-50 well, here. Yeah, look, I mean, it is EL's <laughs> weakest map, and we have seen them have some relatively poor performances on mines, to be honest, but I think it's going to come down to what tanks horsemen are going to pick here. They need to really counter what EL Gaming wanting to do here on uh, on mines, like what we've seen B Gaming do. So coming into these tank picks, I, I'm not a fan of that. I just don't think that the AMX 50Bs are going to be enough here against EL, who... For me, are going to just be so much better in those brawly situations. And once again, we're going to be seeing a WZ111 and a Skoda T50 coming out for EO Gaming, which we saw yesterday on Mines. They actually worked out pretty well for them. So, uh, look, the, the Horseman picks, they're not bad, yeah. but it's just not what I'm looking for here. Like, 
when we saw B Gaming 2.0, EO Gaming on Mines, they were picking things that were a little bit out there, you know, like the FV215B183, the FV4005, and, and really trying to counteract what EO Gaming were doing on Mines. And I just don't think Horsemen are doing that. I think Horsemen are just coming into this with its standard playstyle, and, well, you know, it's going to be a roll of the dice in that sense in these brawly situations, which tend to favor EO Gaming. Look, it's definitely going to be a brawl as we can see the map fly through there, that overview of that choke point where so many tanks have been laid to rest, and we're going to see a few more as we're jumping into game number three. EL already up 2 0 onto Horseman, but you said these fast and early battles could be a 50 50. Everyone rolling on in up into that choke point. It looks like EL are there first. Yep. Black Dots get spotted. Fox shooting a few shells across. Can't seem to connect. Just, oh, he does hit Archon, actually. Typically, the attacking side can get into the hill just a little bit quicker than the defending side. So, sure. no surprise, really, to see EO Gaming gain, gain control of that. And I actually like that Horsemen haven't decided to, to really challenge them for it. Because I think, in that case, EO Gaming would have won that early brawl. Uh, I mean, the AMX 50Bs, of course, can put a bit of damage across to EO Gaming. But it just always feels like EO Gaming is just a little bit better in those brawly situations. So now, Horsemen slowing things down a little bit. Uh, I don't mind that, and we'll see how it turns out for them. They've started off pretty well, admittedly. Oh, they're getting some good shots. Sunmi and Fox TS taking about a quarter health at the moment here. Sunmi takes another shot, so he's in a bad position. They might have to relocate him. Not in uh, lethal range just yet, but still lower than he'd like to be. You can see Spencer over to the left side of the map in that F1 grid, if you will. Mm. Maybe going for a bit of a flank, just trying to spot out members of EL. Yeah, I mean, this is just in case EL decide to actually push in. He can get a lot of free shots across from that position. I'm not so sure about this, really, for EL. I'm not sure what they're exactly trying to do. He looks like they've got nice at the moment. Perhaps he's going to go for a bit of a flank around and, and try and get up on towards that mm. boost, which definitely uh, wouldn't be a bad idea at the moment. So for now, it looks like EL... Just content to play slowly on that hill and wait for Nice to get up onto the boost. And we'll see what Nice can do from that position. But every time that we've seen EL get a boost across here on Mines, it, it has worked out pretty well for them. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how Nice goes here. What a conveniently placed rock. Because if stuck. I don't say so He's myself. No? Can he wedge it through? Yeah, no, he can go back down. Nice. I, don't, I just don't think he hit it. I don't think he hit it quite correctly to be able to get straight up. You can't lose that much momentum on the rock there. So he needs to have another go. I can't believe this is how war was done back in the day. Tanks just driving, driving up hills, up hills and like that. doing doughies, going for some fat drifts, just completely plowing through towns. But it's yeah. a historically accurate game, and see if he can do it again. Yeah, well, probably <laughs> unlikely to see the Chinese <laughs> driving French tanks as well. That's a, that's a great point. <laughs> but we'll see if he gets it. He should get it eventually, and when he does, uh, I think that's going to be the go signal here for EO Gaming. Let's have him... Have a look at him taking another crack. It feels to me like he's going a little bit too far to the left. Like I, I think he, he's, he's taking it a bit too wide. Right yeah. But we know EL Gaming, when it comes to the decision making, it's always top notch. They always seem to be in the right place at the right time, shooting the right enemy tank. So, like you said, it's, it's whether or not Nice can get into that advantageous position, and then it's going to be the kind of go button there. I think Guan Ren's driving around there as well, uh, maybe just to show him how to get up. <laughs> Watch his tutorials online. But we know what EL Gaming are trying to do here. We can see Nice and Guan, they're trying to get up to that. But how? what a horse! What a horseman's play here. Obviously, they're on defense, so they don't have to make that aggressive movement. But they've got a bit of damage here onto Sun Mei. Do they try and pick that one up early? Well, definitely. They're going to have to. They're, they'll have to try and focus down Sun Mei here. As once again, Nice is not going to be able to hit that boost. Let's see if Guan Ren has a, a better time of it. No, he's gone too far to the left as well. This is embarrassing. This is weird. I swear we've seen EL Gaming using that boost before. I don't think it was Guan Ren or Nice who did it. Pretty sure it might have been Sun Me, but it, really, really strange that they're not being able to get that boost. I would have thought they would know how to do it. Look, these are our number one representatives in the APAC region right now. They better be able to get that boost every single time. I am, yeah. I am quite uh, unhappy about that, yeah. to say the least. The number one team, they should be able I to get I think they're going for a, um, a, a two-man. They're, they're pushing him now. Yeah, they're pushing each other, it seems. Let's hope that they get it. Spencer just waiting off onto the beach, enjoying the beautiful scenery that this game has to offer. And judging by the minimap, mm -hmm. they both failed again. Yeah. This is weird. I mean, I guess EL Gaming have a fair bit of time to play with here. They're True. still not yet below that five-minute mark. So, I mean, it's not going to cost them all that much. And Horsemen aren't really doing anything with this time. If they knew that there was two Bat Chats over towards that side of the oh. map trying to do the boost, they would have probably pushed in here to, to try and force a fight on the mines. But uh, unfortunately, of course, they don't have anyone scouting out that direction and uh, haven't got that information. Guan Ren, that's not going to work, buddy. You can get and out of the way for yeah, nice. Yeah. He immediately has to give Finally! it up. Hey! He's got it. Nice. He nice. finally gets up there. Nice. He's on the hill. Yeah. 
Let's see if he can <laughs> he can make it work. They spent about three and a half minutes trying, trying to, to get yeah. this underway, so it better be damn worth it. Yeah, well, I, I, I suspect it probably will be here because... Guan Ren's just given up. He's like, hey, one's yeah, up. they only wanted one up yeah, there, yeah. I think, at the end of the day. I mean, having two over on the boost, I think, is a bit of overkill. They shouldn't be able to get away with that, right? They shouldn't be able to dedicate three and a half minutes to just driving at a hill without <laughs> horsemen punishing them. Well, I mean, the trouble for horsemen is that area of the map is really not very easy to, to scout for them unless they've got someone on the boost themselves. I'm just going to send Spencer Hoonan on in. That guy can fly. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we've seen him do it before. Yeah. He uh, does often get one shot immediately 30 seconds in the game. Yes, so I yes. can understand his reservations at yep. the moment. So we'll see now what Nice can do here. Just peeking around onto in towards the, the defensive spawn. I don't think he can spot out Gorilla from that far away, but it does look like uh, EL taking a little bit of damage now. So there is a bit of movement going on from the EL gaming camp now. Guanren, Sunmi, and Black are coming around Ooh. through that one flag as well. So this is where... You know, the trigger is going to be pulled by Eel. Oh, there it comes right now. Fast and heavy. Fuluso takes quite a bit of damage. Spencer was able to trade some onto Kwai, but got some on the back end of that. Black and Sun Me going wide, trying to really focus out Gorilla. Maybe get a flank on those two AMX 50 Bs. Yeah, it's not a great situation here for EO Gaming, though. You know, all things considered, Guan Ren's been dropped very low. He does manage to pick up the first kill, though, onto Hawks, and I just don't understand how this manages to oh, happen no. for Horsemen. They drop a tank so low, and then all of a sudden, things just swing back around, and EO Gaming managed to pick up the first two kills. Look, again, Sun Me. Guan Ren, very low on HP, still alive, still firing, and finally we're going to see the first kill go the way of the Horseman. Like a spider, uh, like a fly to the web, they just go straight into the firing line. Horseman, once again, just completely being outmaneuvered here. Yeah. Constantly being forced to make the move, even on defense. They, EL Gaming, they just seem to be able to get away with murder. Yep, and Flag here, in a one versus two, he's going to probably go down to the AMX 50B, but... I mean, he's done his job here, essentially. He's, he's to soaked up the damage. He's wasted time here from the Horseman. He'll get a, another, at least one more shot across. Fox TS in the Skoda T50 is going to go down. But again, that's a tier 9, so EO Gaming isn't going to be particularly bothered by it. And Flag, he, again, he's just he's just wasting shells, essentially, from that AMX 50B here. So comes down to these remaining four EO Gaming members. And, and in particular, nice up on that boost to, to really come up and clean these up. The EO Gaming members are quite low, but so is the side of Horseman. Just Rex gets taken down. Nice. With a sniper on that uh, cannon right there, making it look easy. Black, he's going to be in hot pursuit of Spencer right now, who is quite low. 249 health, that's just one shot away from death, and they're going in fast and heavy. He just gets taken down, Black, making it look easy. One player left alive, it's your boy Gorilla. It is your boy Gorilla. He's in a 1 versus 4, and we saw a 1v4 yesterday. We did. Not so similar of a situation though today where uh, a lot of those EO Gaming members have a bit of HP to play with. So I think this will be a little bit beyond him. And, you know, like I said before the start of this match, if this goes to a 3-0, I don't think Horseman can come back from this now. Uh, they are in a rough spot, but they knew they knew just as well as we did going into this game was not going to be easy. Gorilla, he does get one. Maybe can turn around and swing it onto Guan Ren. Not going to happen as Nice picks him up. Yep, again, uh, not a bad performance from EO Gaming there. I actually like that they've, uh, I guess, departed from their general strategy on Mines, which was to to push in towards that coastal cap. Yep. This time we just saw them, you know, they pushed on towards the hill, onto the mine. Uh, they played a little bit slower there. They didn't, you know, try and force anything onto Horseman, and then they got a guy up onto that boost. And I feel like overall, that tends to be a bit of a better strategy for them on Mines. It works out a little bit better. They don't sacrifice so much HP trying to get onto that coastal cap. Sure. And uh, as a result, you can see they picked up the win. It seems to be whenever EL push that go button, decide that it's time to fight, it's always at the perfect time, and no team really has an answer for that just yet. Horseman, they're in a very good position to kind of warn off that aggression, but once again, they get caught off guard. They're forced to just drive straight on into the firing line, and nice up in that advantageous position, able to just rain down the fire. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, EO Gaming there, they just had so many tanks that they were able to get yeah. behind for free. Like, that, that, those three tanks that crossed into the defensive spawn, they didn't get punished for it at all. I mean, Guan Ren, he got dropped pretty low, but by that stage, EO Gaming had already picked up a kill. Yeah, you're exactly right. It was very difficult for them to really uh, utilize those low HP pools because no matter how low EL Gaming do, it feels like that member's able to get off a few more shots. Yeah, look at Guan, Guan Ren there. He, he manages to get the first kill despite being so low on HP. The AMX 50Bs here, they've just walked into a massive crossfire. Nice up on the hill. He's putting so much damage across to Nandesu there. And Quiet, even if he goes down, you know, it, it's again not, not a bad job. situation. He, yeah, exactly. He's done his job. He's got the damage across. 
and those Amex 50Bs weren't able to, to really take it to the remaining EO Gaming players. So, at the end of the day, it was pretty easy cleanup in the end there for EO Gaming. Guan Ren didn't even die. No. He's the first in, last out. That's how yeah. it works. These guys, they well. take, they they know all their jobs perfectly, and they're all mm. able to like sacrifice uh, the HP pool of their tanks just to get the appropriate damage in. Yeah, and when we see someone up on the boost there, we tend to see them doing pretty well on the damage charts. Let's see if that's going to be the case. Yeah, it is. Nice yep. second. Guan Ren. Like, see? I just don't know why Horsemen... Like, the problem for Horsemen is... Their focus fire is not quite there. They're not getting the kills that they need. They get the damage across and leave a tank one or two shots from dead, and then Guan Ren ends up doing 3.6k damage. Like, it's just not... That's not how you're going to win, right? They need to be able to pick up these kills, and for me, it's just going to be too little too late, even if they do start to make a comeback into this. No, the flaws are very evident. It's just whether or not they have enough time between games to really identify them appropriately and come up with an accurate solution to these problems, because this is the third map we've seen the end of the game, EL tanks all sub 1k health, right? And if it keeps, if this trend keeps going, then they're just going to stomp them in the next one too. Yeah, look, definitely. Eagle Gaming moving over to the defensive side of mines. And to be honest, I mean, I'm not too worried for them now. Like I, yeah. like I said, I said it towards the early start or towards the start of this series that maybe Horseman was going to be able to pick up one here on mines. But overall, it just seems like Eagle Gaming is, a, is such a stronger side oh, yeah. that uh, Horseman. You know, for them to come back into this one, it's going to be a bit of a mammoth effort. Look, morale definitely going to be low after that one. They looked like they had an early start, and then it just kind of came crumbling down, even though EL spent uh, about three minutes dicking around trying to get up yeah. onto that cliff. So they made it work in the end, but uh, it did work out quite well. Nice. He was able to lay down the hurt Guan Ren as well, just dishing out the damage. These yeah. guys, damage is coming from every single angle. Well, they knew that they knew that they needed someone up on the uh, up on the boost there. So obviously they took their time about it, but they got him up there, and it worked out in the end. So heading into the second half, I think they're going to be sitting themselves in a pretty good possession position. It's uh, it's a different setup though from EL Gaming here, and I do like it coming out on the uh, defensive side. That's interesting. An RHM RHM Borsig, it, very very different. I don't think we've seen that at all throughout our season so far. But the E100 no. and the FE215B, I don't mind that coming out from EL Gaming. I expect those will be just positioned near to the to the hill there, towards the bottom. Um, but the RHM, that is uh, raising a bit of a question mark for me. Fox, yes, he did quite well in the grille uh, earlier on. We'll have to see if he can utilize these yeah. kind of artillery tanks and really dish out the damage. But Sunmi and the E100, we've seen EO when they use that front line, they can use it so damn effectively. Definitely. And uh, for now, EO Gaming just positioning the FE215B and the E100 uh, quite safely. They're just slowly but surely trying to peek up in towards that, uh, that little hill there. They've given up control of the mine to Horsemen. But, you know, we saw a similar situation here for EO Gaming yesterday. And they were just able to uh, really just, again, snowball the game away from their opponents. Black and Gorilla in a little bit of a standoff here. Black taking the back end of that one. But Nondasu took a shot for his trouble as well. Now Gorilla can't really afford to move out of there. Or else Nice and Black are just going to jump on him. And he's going to get taken out quite easy. Yeah, this is uh, an interesting spot, actually, for Black. He's very much out in the open. So if... I don't know, if Fuluso pops down in towards the coast there, I think Black might be in a spot of bother here. Gorilla's going to be able to take another shot into him. I, I don't know about this position for Black. I'm not a huge fan of it. He's taking quite a bit of damage. Gorilla also. We'll have to see if Quiet can maybe come up. He is spotted out, so Gorilla is going to know he is to his right. But, yeah, no one's really... It's once again, EL, they're pushing the limits of the game and no one's punishing them for it. Yeah, exactly. I think Black shouldn't be able to survive there for that long, to be honest. Uh, we'll see what Spencer could do. He is starting to rotate across here in the Batchat 25T AP, so he might be able to cause a bit of trouble for Black when he gets into a good position. Uh, but certainly Black, uh, yeah, like I I'm questioning what he's been doing up there. He's been dropped down to 567, and Quiet's also taken a bit of damage there, so that, that sort of Western presence that EO Gaming had over towards that side of the map hasn't necessarily worked out too well for them. Black has decided to back off now, licking his wounds only about a... Th uh 500 health pool left as I say that he gets one go. in the back it's taken quite low but here comes the squadron from EL they're coming in they had that E100 in the front line and the rest of the tanks just cool. filing on through the floodgates are open EL they're coming in fast flag it's taken quite low they're trying to take out Archon here he's quite tanky himself gets taken 
down pretty low. Rex in a bit of trouble. Here comes Veluso looking up at Sunmi in that E100, just doing his job and doing it damn well. Flag gets the kill onto Archon, and now the brawl is well and truly in full effect. Yeah, definitely. The RHMB Waffentrager here of Foxy S is actually working out quite well. He's done a little bit of damage across to a couple of tanks. He should be off the reload now, looking for his second shot into probably just Rex there in the 113. He's not going to be able to connect that, but I think it went into Spencer there. So just straight ignoring just Rex right now. Yeah, I mean, this is... a. Uh, I don't know, it's it's kind of hard to call where this one's going to go because EL Gaming at the moment, very low on HP. All those bat chats, you can see one shot apart from Flag, who's got a little bit of HP to play with. But the E100's down here for EL Gaming. The FV215B is down as well. And, well, Fox TS, he's been doing some good work in that RHMB, but he's on fire. He's going to get taken down. Fuluso gets dropped very low, and Flag in their bat chat is also able to pick up just Rex. So now, pretty much everyone on the field here is... Almost a one-shot. Nundesu and Gorilla might be able to survive one, but uh, gee, this is going down to the wire. This is a battle of reflexes right now. The trigger fingers are going to be itching, like you mentioned. Everyone's sub 1k health right now. The first person to fall in this standoff will be Faluso. He only has 63 HP, so I'm sure a well-placed rock could have taken him down. And yeah. ooh, when you hit that low, you can't be running into each other, Gorilla. Yeah. No, uh, luckily it only takes about 20 HP of damage there, but uh, certainly things can't go or don't necessarily go so well when a Batchat 25 TAP runs into a heavy tank. For now, Guan Ren is the only one for EO Gaming that's been spotted here, so, you know, he needs to be careful of his position. Ooh. Oh, but there you go. Another one gets taken down by EO Gaming. They do take a, a shot in response, but Flag, he's okay for now. Still very low on HP, and it's a two versus four now. From this position, it, it, it's going to be so tough for Horsemen to come back into this, but luckily, they have auto loaders, so they can quickly change their targets. They don't have to wait for a long reload if it gets into a sort of a brawly situation. So maybe there is an off chance, of course, that Horseman can pick this up. Gorilla trying to be fancy there, slide on into the back, but kind of able to manage it right now. He has regrouped with none to sue, but as you can see by the positioning that EL Gaming, they're going to be coming in from every single angle. That's what they the, need to do, right? Well, the the autolers, they can shoot fast, but they can't turn fast. So if they're getting yeah. shot from every single angle, it's not going to matter how fast you can exactly. shoot. Exactly. You can't shoot the guy behind you and in front of you. Mm -hmm. So as long as EL Gaming peak here all at the so same time and, and present multiple targets to, to uh, Horsemen, then they should be able to pick up the victory here. Even if they lose a couple of tanks, as long as they're trading well, they should be able to pull this off. Look, I love the way EL Gaming play out these nail-biting scenarios. Everyone's sub-300 health at the moment, so they don't have much to work with, but that's where EL Gaming, that's what EL Gaming do best. When they're all low HP, when their tanks are one bad uh, slip away from falling to pieces, they are able to clench these wins out. So it's going to be on Horsemen, who are on that attacking side with four and a half minutes left. Still a good chunk of time to play with to yep. make something happen. Nondesu misses a shot, yeah. takes a big one for his trouble that, as well. It, it's really important there for, for him to hit that shot because he effectively puts himself now to one shot and the job is so much easier, twice as easy even for oh, yeah. uh, for the Horsemen to take him down because ordinarily he would have oh. taken two shots and again Gorilla's going to take another free shot. So in this situation, uh, I mean, EO Gaming, oh, I mean, rather Horseman, that slight advantage that they maybe did have is now, or has now been taken away from them. Look, that's exactly right. Down to 98 HP is Gorilla from about 500, so Nondesu is going to have to go for the play here. Quiet just comes in, and Guan Ren takes out his opposing member here, making it look easy once again. These guys, they play with the bare minimum, the bare bones, yeah. and they are able to take away another yeah, one. Yeah, look, I mean, again, they're for Horsemen. They, they really couldn't afford to let those two free shots go across to them. Yeah, that was... Their, their, their only advantage in that situation was that both of their tanks were going to be able to survive at least one shot. And in that case, they might have been able to, you know, trade a shot, take out a tank for free, free <laughs> essentially, and then maybe get a second shot off. But uh, unfortunately, they gave away too much early on in that... that that sort of some late skirmish that uh, obviously they weren't able to close out in the end. So a good performance again from EL Gaming and just once again proving how much stronger they are against the Horsemen. Well, they got completely surrounded and we saw early on in that game just how things broke out in the middle of the fight. Everyone just on the back of Sun Me trying to come up and keep mad. And look how much damage Sun Me soaked up before finally getting taken down. I'm pretty impressed with Fox TS overall, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he got a few good shots off in the RHM Boar Sig. Uh, so... You know, for a tier eight tank like that to, to put the put the damage across that it did, I I'd like to see where he's sitting on the the damage charts. But I definitely think he'll be, you know, he will have been worth. It was worth picking that tank essentially. And actually, I think he just set off. He set Fuluso on fire there yep. as well with that shot. So that's going to be a little bit of extra uh, damage in the bank for him as well. But yeah, overall, I think you can very much justify the pick there for him. And you can see they are able to play these fast tanks so damn well. Just completely. Mm -hmm.
cr- uh, crushing the defense that Horseman tried to uh, set up. And we are going to have a look at just how the damage got dispensed in that game there. There you go, Fox TS. Top damage for his team in the Tier 8 tank. Impressive. With only three shots fired, yes, one of them, I guess, set his opponent on fire, but uh, a great performance from him, really, to be able to out-damage a couple of bat chats. Uh, Fuluso in the AMX 50B, well, he did his job, but uh, unfortunately, again, you know, didn't have that backup from the rest of his teammates. So, well, again, I- EL Gaming just... So strong. That's a lot of damage dealt, but when that's going straight onto the E100, it's not damage in the right place. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's the trouble as well. There, so many shots had to go into that E100, and to an extent as well, the FE215B, both heavier tanks that we tend to see here on mines, that uh, it, it allowed the guys from EL, those yeah. bat chats, so much more extra time just to get some damage across. And I mean, that's not a bad damage stat as well, coming out from Sun Me in the E100. He gets a couple of shots across, 1400 coming out from him. And I mean, his job is not necessarily to do a lot of damage. It is there to soak up the damage. So uh, he's done good. FE215B of nice, again, not so bad for him. And I guess really for the 113 here of Hawks, that's a little disappointing to see him only on 800 damage. But again, it's just EO Gaming being EO Gaming and, and proving to us how strong they are. Yeah, being able to utilize these drastically different tank lineups yeah. each time we see them, is it always impresses the heck out of me. And the E100, we do see teams tend to run two yeah. to get that double, but they can they are able to find these like little places where they can maybe cut out one E100, run something a little bit different. We saw that Tier 8 tank, and then uh, still able to get a win. Yeah, look, I mean, and the start that we've seen EL Gaming get here, 4-0 after the first two maps, it, it really makes me think this one's going to be a 5-0. So heading on to steps, best case scenario probably for Horsemen is that they start off on the attack. Maybe they can get one here, but... I don't know. I'm not holding my breath. We've been talking about interesting lineups. We'll have to see what these guys have picked for game number five here. And 4-0 to EL right now. It's looking grim. It definitely is. Uh, it's not a bad lineup from Horseman. Relatively standard here. EL Gaming, though, you know, they, they've started off on the attack. So the defense for Horseman, really, this is going to be the issue for them, is that they're very poor on the defensive steps. And yeah, they're okay on the attack, but... Two wins out of seven played on on the defensive steps. It's really not filling me with confidence. And EL Gaming have yet to actually lose on steps attack. So, you know, when you look look at that sort of on paper statistic, it, it really doesn't fill you with confidence here for Horsemen. To see how Horsemen can utilize their lineups. They have been playing not the best tanks tonight, but and if there's a time to turn it around, it's got to be now. Oh, definitely. I mean, they, they've got no chances left. They don't have anything they can play with. If, if EL Gaming pick this one up, of course, they're going to be taking off that 5-0 and zero victory, which would, I guess, be just another one of those 5-0 victories <laughs> in their back pocket. EL Gaming on the attack here with all those bat chats and uh, potential for them to go very quickly in towards that one flag, which is what we see them do a lot on steps. Yesterday, they played a little bit slower on the attack, but this time, it definitely looks like they're very committed in towards that one cap and I think yesterday they might have uh, uh, might have also had a artillery perhaps uh, and that might have been why they were playing a little bit slow but uh, now look at this they're just all seven of them moving straight in towards that one flag I feel like this is where EL Gaming play best when they back their plays a hundred percent no yep. hesitation all seven tanks moving up well, of course you're gonna have the Goulet, Goulet uh waiting a little bit behind to try and get those crosses but you can see these fast, small tanks moving up onto the train line. Yep. And they've already got so much map control now oh, as yeah. well. They know that Horsemen are playing for that two-flag defense, which is, is relatively standard. Spencer's up on that uh, boost here as well now. And, well, now that EL Gaming have control of all of this area of the map, Fox TS has started to move up in that grill. And to be honest, once that AMX 1390 gets onto the flag here for Nice, it's going to be so difficult for Horsemen to come back in here and reset him because, you know, just having a grill firing at you and all of these, oh, yeah. all of these bat chats in the positions that EL Gaming are going to be able to set themselves up in. It's not a nice situation at all for the Horsemen to find themselves in. You can see Horsemen, they've kind of set themselves up a line of scrimmage along these ridges here and it's, if they're defending the two cap and leaving the one very vulnerable and already EL, they know, they've already established how do we lose this round? It's if they flank us, so straight away flagging Guan Ren, they're on that flank, they're watching mm-hmm. that. And look at the damage, Gorilla's already taken a shot there and uh, he's gotten pretty low on HP so he's going to have to <laughs> just back out a little bit uh, from that, Alex is going to have to teach me that move. That was a cool zoom. Yeah, I like the zoom. <laughs> I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that so far. So uh, the observers going to have to uh, step up. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> but nice, he is in a good position here, dodging a few shots. Cap down to about 90, and they're just whizzing past him right now. Yeah, they don't know actually where he is at the moment. Mm. He's not spotted. So, horsemen uh, trying for some luck shots, and they're actually getting pretty close. To be fair. 
but close enough is not good enough in this situation when they do, do need to hit him. And I mean, yeah, they've got a fair bit of time to play with, but but a lot of the time we do see that timer getting down very low, down towards 30 seconds, and that's the, they only then is when the defending side starts to push in and really try to get that reset. So I think Horsemen are going to need to you know give themselves a little bit more time than that because to go up Oof. against something like a grill, you know they're going to be putting themselves in some really dangerous positions, and it's not going to be easy for them. But nice. <laughs> He's, uh, he hasn't had to do much to dodge all no. these bullets, but he's doing a good job of it. Like, you know, he hasn't hit, been hit yet. And there's so many bullets whizzing around him, or so many shells, I suppose, whizzing around him. Finally, he takes hey, a shot. There we go. There you go, down to uh, 221, or down by 221. And Black's actually going to go down there. First tank to fall, and could this be what Horseman needed to finally uh, gallop out the gate here? Potentially. You can see they've, uh, they've got about 20% or 30% of the map to work with. They've been, like, yeah. corralled back into their pen here. So EL Gaming, despite losing a member, still have that uh, massive map control that they're exerting. Yeah, definitely. But EL Gaming still here uh, are, are trying to force Horsemen into something, try and get them to come to them so that they mm -hmm. can get a lot of free shots across. And for now, Horsemen just aren't really biting. And I, I think they're going to be content with that as long as they can continue getting those resets. Spencer has just been tagged down a little bit as well there by EL Gaming, but but still, Horsemen have that tank advantage, so if they inevitably do have to push in towards this cap, they at least have that to work with. Well, they were able to angle out nice before. We'll have to see if they can do it again, but this time it seems precautions have been laid by EL Gaming to make, uh, to make sure that Horsemen can't get into those little sneaky sniper spots here and... Just looking at the minimap, it's so difficult. Where do they, what avenue of attack do they go that just doesn't leave them completely vulnerable to the crossfire? I think, I mean, the best case scenario probably for Horsemen is to cross over the tracks there. Oh, uh, so much time. But yeah, like, it, it's really not easy for them here at the moment. If they do try and cross those tracks, Fox TS is going to get at least one shot across to one of their members. That's going to be another 700 or so damage going across to Horsemen, and they can't really afford that at this stage, even though they are a tank up. Looks like they're going to send Spencer forward here just to try and do a bit of scouting, potentially to get in a position for a reset, but in the end, they don't need the reset. Nice has just fallen off the cap, and that push from Horsemen doesn't work out at all. They, they trade back. Admittedly, a Tier 8 for a Tier 10 still favors the Horsemen in a sense here, but, sure. but again, they've just let something slip. They had to reset the cap soon, but looks like they were content with sacrificing Spencer yeah. for that. They are five minutes left to play with here, but once again, EL pressuring them with getting on that cap and should be nice. He's in a very small tank here. He's in that AMX 1390, so in a little bit of a different position. I think he's nudged over to the right here, but they, do are, they are able to get those positional advantages on him. Yeah, it's... Uh it's been a little unlucky for Nice. He's been hit up quite a few times so far, and that one almost grows into him as well. Grazed him. Just, just. But uh, in the end, he's going to be surviving for now. And still, that timer ticking down. It actually looks like Eel Gaming has stuck another person onto that cap now. So now the pressure again starting to mount a little bit for Horsemen. They have to, to get resets onto a couple of those Eel Gaming players now. And they, they probably do have to commit towards this one. You can see them starting to posture up towards the northern end of the map now. But Quiet is in a great spot to take them down if they try to cross over uh, over those tracks. And Gorilla takes a shot from Fox TS there as well. So that's not good for him at all. Yeah, he cops a massive amount of damage. Quiet is being forced back off that ridge. But you can see on the minimap flag, he's just kind of sitting there like a silent guardian watching the entire planes right now, making sure that no one is allowed any more uh, wiggle room than they're entitled to here. And Guan Ren all the way at the bottom, just making sure that uh, Horsemen don't try anything cheeky. They are able to get the reset with 10 seconds left on the clock, but he's only on to one member here. So 70 seconds, three and a half minutes to play with Horsemen. They've got to act soon. Yeah, they definitely do, but they've They've allowed sort of the damage swing now to come back, and EL Gaming have that HP advantage where previously they were at a deficit. And so it's, it's been really good work from EL Gaming just to get that extra damage across to Horseman. A third player going to be joining that cap as well now for EL, and it's basically now or never for Horseman. Only 20 seconds left to work with. This is, is not going to be easy for them to get in there. Quiet's just also taking down Gu uh, Just Rex, so another player goes down for Horseman, and they're, they're really, their back is against the wall. 40 seconds left on the cap. They have to make the play. It's now or never, and unfortunately, like you said, they lost Just Rex, a great crossfire from that Sun May. He's going to be the first point of defense here. He does have Quiet off to the left, who is on that ridge. Not to mention Fox TS as well can fire oh, yeah. into this position, so uh, Archon, he's going to be spotted out oh. there, and 
Oh, 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 wow. That's a lot of damage. I don't know if he got hit by two shots at once, but... Uh, yeah, I think he got... He must have got he, hit he by Fox there. I don't know. If Tanks could bleed, he would be bleeding out right now, and he might be in trouble. Now, Hawk getting shot by Quiet. Shouldn't have much trouble finishing him off. Sunmei is able to pick up Archon Gorilla. Trade, so the Gorilla is down. They won't have that massive heavy firepower that EL have been utilizing well. The cap does get reset, but it's mm. a four versus five. Two minutes and a half left on the clock here, so uh, that time is starting to tick down for EL Gaming. They are going to have to start to really take this game to horsemen, and it does seem like that's what they're doing. Flag and Guan Ren towards the southern end of the map. You can see them starting to push forward a little bit. Uh, and Quiet, he's falling back a little bit, but should be able to take down that kill onto Hawks. Looks like Hawks is going to just try and hide in that bush, but uh, he's in such a dangerous spot here with such low HP that you have to think he's probably not got long left for this life. Yeah, one stray shot is going to take him out right now, but Quiet does get taken. Quite low here when he's trying to go for Hawks. That Bush being his best friend right now. The alarm has been sounded. That's the two minute time remainder right now. So, EL, they are in the hill. They do have the player advantage at the moment. But for Luso, he's got full HP right now, and the object 140 might be able to make a play. Potentially. And again, he's going to have to be the one that we look at here. I guess Nundesu as well is pretty healthy, but. Guan Ren for EL Gaming, he's got full HP in his bat chat and definitely oh, yeah. can output enough damage that uh, he should be able to deal with both Faluso and Nundesu if he gets a bit of backup from his teammates. Although, in saying that, nice in the 1390, he's gone down. That is the tier 8 tank for EL Gaming. So now we're back to four tier 10s versus four tier 10s, and uh, it's really hanging in the balance. Still, EL Gaming have a slight HP advantage. If Quiet can get one shot off here, it's probably going to be a pretty decent trade for him. And he does manage to do that. So now, is he going to be able to get another one? No, Faluso will be able to take him down. Sun he gets dropped a, a little bit as well. So this is not looking all that great for EO Gaming. There's only one minute left on the clock, and they've actually set two players on towards that two flag with Sun Me trying to hold things off. I'm not so sure about this strategy. Horsemen should be able to actually win this one. They should get that reset and fall back with a, a couple of tanks left alive. So EO Gaming, really, their back is against the wall. Yeah, last minute rotation. Let's see if they... It's a very bold play. Sun Me's going to get on the cap here, actually, though. That's going to drop it down. And is Horseman going to be able to get the reset in time? Oh, 10 seconds left on the clock. You can see all four members of Horseman streaming into the battlefield with only five seconds left. Could EL have stolen this win away? Gorilla, he needs to get in there in time and get the show. Oh, they're not going to get second. it. Oh, they did. Did they? No. no. Oh, my Lord. Unfortunate. EL steal away a win from Horseman. Yeah. They got caught sleeping on their laurels. They had the advantage. They yeah. had that game in their bag. One shell to reset the timer, and they just couldn't do it. They Heartbreaking. Could. Exactly. Yeah. Like, that was that was their best chance to pick up a round here, and they weren't able to pull it off. So, EO Gaming with a bit of a master stroke mm. towards the end there to drop those three tanks on, on towards that two cap. And, well, it certainly worked out well for them. You yeah. can see it was close. A great rotation. But it worked out once again for them. So, uh, five and zero in the favor of EO Gaming. I don't think too many people are going to be surprised by that result. Look, what a looming presence you have to have when you have two members left on the cap with 30 seconds left on the clock and the enemy team with four members are too afraid to push you. So, uh, shout out to EL for a very bold strategy and realistically they shouldn't have won that last round but somehow they did yeah there wasn't really much else that they could do when it got down to sort yeah. of that one minute mark I thought they, they were actually going to take a fight when it was five versus four yeah. and really take the battle to the horsemen but they opted to play a little bit safer horsemen came to them picked up a couple of uh, a couple of kills and really then EO Gaming looked like uh, they were in a, a spot of bother but like I said, Master Stroke to get on towards that two flag, and uh, it, it caught me off guard, caught Horseman off guard as well, apparently. Look, that's the thing. They had one way to win, and by hell they did it. So we are going to have a quick look at how that game went, and it's kind of a uh, recap of the entire series, right? Horseman, they look kind of good in their early game, but it's EL's decision-making yeah. that gets them that edge up. Yeah, exactly. And I guess when the mechanics fail for EL Gaming, uh, when they're not getting the trades that they want, as you say, that decision-making, they can fall back on that. And once again, just proving to be so much stronger than the rest of the pack here in uh, in the APAC region. So, EL, it's been a good week for them. They've picked up two five zeros. Yeah. Uh, so heading into next week. And, of course, you know, they're, they're quite securely sitting in the number one position. But just again, it's another confidence boost. And heading in towards finals, they, they really do seem to be, once again, back to their old selves. Look, and that was the rotation that won them the game. And you can see the horseman tanks, they're just not fast enough. The two batshats trying to get in hard and heavy. You can see the aimers, they're just scanning the entire hill. And when they finally get in range, it's a little too late. I thought he might just get the reset <sighs> we there. We have seen it go down to zero yeah. and, then get, and then get reset. It needs that extra tick when it's on zero yeah. to win. But unfortunately for horsemen, yeah. that was not the case. Not quite. And uh, as you say, unfortunate for them. I would have liked to have seen them get 5-1. That would have 
been allow- uh, allowed me to get my prediction correct. <laughs> but um, to be honest, a 5-0 for EL Gaming is not a huge surprise either. So uh, just once again coming out for EL Gaming, looking so much stronger. And I think, you know, when we look at the damage stats, I mean... No surprises there. Yeah, really. look, the Grill 15 once again coming up pretty big for EO Gaming. And yeah, we're going to see a few of those Horsemen players up towards the top True. because that game went so late. Those EO Gaming players got so low. But really, what does the damage matter for Horsemen when you lose the game? Well, that's right. The damage matters nothing when you lose by time as well. So yeah. the uh, Fox, he did a great job just outputting that damage. We saw that massive 1K shot he did on Arkon when he was trying to go across the train track saying, hey, listen, mate, uh, you're not flanking me any time soon. And down at the bottom, Nice and uh, Black. Black and Nice, they didn't do anything. Yeah. Not well. a single shot fired. Well, I mean, Nice Pacifists. was... Pacifists. Yeah. <laughs> nice was sitting on that uh, on that cap the entire time for EL Gaming, but I'm not sure what Black was doing. Missing. Well, he didn't even fire a shot. Oh, Rex, sorry. Yeah, Rex was missing. Oh, Rex was missing, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, or Black not. just straight Pacifist. Yeah, he, he, uh, he, he must have gotten taken down pretty early on. I'm not sure. Um, but regardless, didn't do any damage. It doesn't matter, though, for EO Gaming. Like I said, damage stats really don't matter at the end of the day. As long yeah. as you pick up the win, it doesn't matter how you pick up the win. Uh, you know, the win is the win. And uh, 5-0 is definitely a very convincing one for EO Gaming. Look, a very great series for EO Gaming. You mentioned yesterday they were able to 5-0 Karen Tiger. So yep. I'm not looking forward to anyone t- who will be taking uh, to the uh, maps against EL next week. Because that's yep. going to be rough. But we do have a 10-minute break coming up. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back.